let me ask you, Mr. Garlock, coming from the Go Association. So it seems that Mr. Selman and his fellows are going to take away the jobs of the best Go players. Are you happy about that? Oh, I think so. It's, it's been, I got to tell you, really amazing. You know, Go is 4,000 years old, and, you know, you would think there would be nothing new under the sun with a game uh, invented in China, by the way. Uh, but AlphaGo has really taught us mm -hmm. so much. We're seeing new moves, moves that we thought were bad moves that AlphaGo was showing us. Maybe they are good moves. Uh, we're actually, but we have top pros who are learning from AlphaGo. So it's, it's a pretty exciting time uh, for Go players. Okay. Well, it seems that Mr. Garlock sounds diplomatic. He tried to say friendship first, competition second. But Mr. Selman, obviously, that is very different, uh, shall I say, a motto for you and your colleagues. Yeah, it's, it's uh, an amazing time for artificial intelligence. Uh, things that, uh, techniques that weren't working up till a few years ago are, are suddenly starting to work. Um, so uh, DeepMind is showing us amazing uh, progress. And so there's an excitement in the field that we're starting to understand human intelligence, uh, how to mimic it, how to uh, mimic it with computers better and better. And we, we have a feeling that we're, we're starting to get to, to the essence of, of intelligence and thinking uh, and are able to, to mimic it uh, on machines. All so right. it's, it's an exciting time for AI. I, I, do agree, I do agree that the field, if you look at the, uh, an area like Go, there will be a symbiosis that, that machines and computers uh, can learn from each other. So there is there's definitely a positive Professor aspect to Selman, it. Professor Selman, you sound very cool-minded. So let me continue by asking you another question. Mm. How about that? That is, um, you know, besides competing in the Go games, in the international chess games, mm. what else really has artificial intelligence achieved over the past few years? Can you hear? Uh, yes, uh, uh, part of your question fell, fell away. So you say the achievements of AI over the past few years? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, so, so the, the big change in the last uh, five years, roughly, is that computers are now starting to able to hear and see us. Uh, people were not fully aware of this, but computer vision and speech recognition right. were very poor um, up till five years ago. Um, so now what we're seeing, and this was really an, an enormous breakthrough um, in the field, uh, computers are, are able to starting to see around us, see like humans, see, starting to hear as humans can talk to them. Mm. Um, and it's a similar technique as used in AlphaGo, learning from enormous amounts of data. Yeah. So, so that's starting to work, and, and there's a general sense in the field um, that now computers will be able to interact with us and learn how we perceive the world and how we act in the world and that's making a major difference uh, mm -hmm. in our field mm -hmm. uh, and this was unexpected. So, okay, so could you, as you can see years, on the screen uh, right now, the gold player keep on uh, waving his head and saying, well, oh, I have done my best, but Mr. Mock, <laughs> the two last two games, was it a show for commercial reasons? AlphaGo, after all, it's a company developed by Google, and this is the perfect timing to make it a commercial show. Or is it really that we are having a breakthrough of artificial intelligence that is likely to benefit us in so many different ways? Well, I think Eric Schmidt has it right that, I mean, humanity wins here in that um, this is an important milestone. Depends on what kind of humanity you're talking about here. <laughs> well, I think all of us, all, right. all of us do benefit. Um, but it's important to point out that when we look at chess, we look at Go, these are examples of what's called perfect information games. And that's very different from dealing with a lot of human problems where most of the information is not known. Mm. There's another important development that I think points to some of the exciting breakthroughs in artificial intelligence in that uh, computers have actually beat humans at poker mm. now. And that's a better example of an imperfect information right. game. And we can see applications of things like negotiations, buying a house, uh, where you know this right. is maybe the next generation of AI applications. There are a lot of 
gentlemen, wow effect. Wow, it could do this. Wow, artificial intelligence is coming. But you know what? We haven't seen much about how prepared we're getting as the human society, or shall I say the humanity. How much have we prepared for a world in which we work with artificial intelligence or let artificial intelligence work for us? I want to go back to you, Professor Selman, about that. Your job is not to challenge the human being, but rather how to better our future. Yes, and, and I think you're raising a very important point. Uh, society uh, will need to prepare for these changes. Um, a, a lot of uh, jobs and a lot of work that people do currently will be better done by machines. Uh, Self-driving cars is, is a good example. Mm. They, they are already uh, getting close to actually driving more safely and better and more consistently than humans. Which, which puts uh, at risk all uh, transportation-related jobs. Right. Um, we'll see changes in many different fields like that, uh, medical diagnosis, computers uh, will probably outperform medical professionals. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, it's an important issue to raise uh, for people to become aware of um, that society will change. It will be positive in many ways. That is, we actually have more leisure time. We're, right. we're, we, we'll have to work less. Uh, but of course, we have to make sure that people are still uh, feel meaningful right. and and can be part of this society, and that's a challenge that governments and, and politicians and uh, policymakers and we, have to address together with researchers in AI. And we have a specific example because Mr. Garlock is sitting here with us. I mean, from now on, how can you be encouraging to many of your friends in the goal? Field. I mean, they would say, after all, the computer beat us. What can we do? Uh, even if we come up with some of the magic remedies to solve the current problem, the computer is going to learn overnight, and they're going to beat us again. What is the point? They would ask, <laughs> Mr. Garlock. Yeah, it's really interesting. You know, they said that, of course, uh, with Deep Blue, and somehow people are still playing chess and enjoying <laughs> chess. And the other wonderful thing about the game of Go is that, yes, in, a, in, in Go, there are, you, somebody wins and somebody loses. Um, but Go is a cooperative game. You know, we are working together, the two players, to create the most beautiful game. Yes. I don't have to wipe you out as my opponent. I can, and in fact, the first uh, game uh, uh, this week was won by a half a point by AlphaGo. And that's what we really want is a beautiful game in which we learn things. Mm. And so I think that what my you know, AI colleagues have been talking about uh, apply to the game as well. And of course, you know, we want to win and we prefer to win, mm. uh, but you, it's, there's a saying that you often, your, your best, uh, the best things that you learn are when you lose. And yeah. so I think maybe winning and losing is maybe not quite as important as people think. Uh, Mr. Garlock, what you have just said reminds me of the legends related to the goal game thousands of years ago. It is not just about win and lose. It is about the human spirits behind a competition. Some of the biggest legends of goal players even suggest that they do not want to win over the opponent in big way. They just want to win 51%. That's it. Just a little that, to win. That's right. And yet give the other party enough space to maneuver and enjoy as well. That is a kind of level, spiritual level that we're talking about here. Mr. Garlock, do you think that part will still be with us? Do you think this, you know, computers playing the game likely to overall transform the spirit of the game? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. In fact, I'm reminded another wonderful Chinese art uh, that, uh, that, that you've given us is uh, Tai Chi. Mm. And, uh, and, and it's a similar thing in Tai Chi as in Go, you know, uh, the emphasis is on balance. Uh, if you're too aggressive in Tai Chi, just as you're, if you're too aggressive in Go, you often wind up losing. So you have to be patient, you have to be balanced. Uh, you have to really enjoy uh, to mm. play Tai Chi or to play Go. And there's a saying in, in Tai Chi that I think applies yes. here, which is you must invest in loss. You invest in loss, which is a, 
it's a little odd for us in the West to think about investing in loss, but I, I think that it applies. Uh, you, you, again, you learn the most uh, when you lose. Again, we want to win, of course, we want you know, to win, but you know it's what? more important to play. Yeah, but you know what, Mr. Garlock, when you are talking, Mr. Selman, Professor Selman, in fact, keep on nodding his head. That means he's also learning about that, and he's going to put all of these <laughs> lifelong learning skills to those AIs that they're going to know in the future. So it's not just the human spirit anymore. But putting that aside, Mr. Mark, what, what Mr. Garlock just said, is that self-comforting of human being we were doing to ourselves that, you know, we are always better than machines. They will never learn a certain part of us. And we are always going to be the future of the world. But the question fundamentally is, is it still going to be true? Will AI take on life of its own, Mr. Mark? Well, I think it already is taking a life of its own, just as we see in the Industrial Revolution, uh, automation of machinery reduced the need for human oh, labor. You sound so calm where you're talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, but I think that, um, you know, the guest uh, from the Go Association makes a great point that uh, part of life is about experiencing things, but mm -hmm. part of it is utilitarian, getting things done efficiently. And I think AI will definitely help us with the latter, making life more efficient. Yeah. Um, but it might also create new opportunities for richer life experiences as well. Well, but Professor Selman, well, you are working on the AI. What are the human beings going to do? Of course, our jobs going to be different in the future because certain jobs going to be, you know, AI do it. We just sit around and do other things. But how? That is the biggest question mark. Uh, are we going to have, Professor Selman, a division of labor? Well, some of you are working on AI, while others are, can be here looking for the future of human beings when it comes to jobs, when it comes to the way of thinking, and when it comes to our philosophy as well, Professor Selman. Yes, um, I, I think it's actually it's, it's a very exciting time, uh, both for AI and for humans. So we will discover new capabilities or, or, or creativity of the human mind, uh, human interaction. So people often ask me, you know, what jobs are, are not so much at risk? Uh, well, one important area of, of activities is human interaction and the way uh, humans relate to each other. Um, we will always have a preference, I believe we'll always have a preference to, uh, to interact with, with other humans and so uh, professions that, that are deal with caregiving or deal with teaching human mm. to human. Um, there, there are lots of activities that, that humans will remain unique in, especially since we are mm. uh, human and a, a unique organism. I see. Um, so we'll, I, I actually think we'll discover new things that, that we are good at and, and we'll complement the machines. And the machines might actually take care of the more mundane yeah. things in our lives. Okay, before um, we go. So, so we should Keep the positive. Yeah. Before we go, we only <laughs> have uh, 30 seconds left. Everyone from you, the three, who is going to win for the last game of the series of three? Okay, Andy, you're back. <laughs> I think it'll be 2 1. All right, you say it? Okay. Barf. Barf, Mr. Barf. Uh, uh, 2 1. Uh, uh, 1 for the humans, yeah. <laughs> and Chris. Oh, you know, I'd like to agree with my colleagues, but I got to say it's going to be AlphaGo. I think it's going to be 3-0. Sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. All right. We well. can only hope. <laughs> okay. okay. No matter which side you bet on, <laughs> gentlemen, have a great weekend, and we're going to mm -hmm. enjoy that game on Saturday. Thank you so much for joining us. Chris Garlock, Bart Selman, and Andy Mock. Thank you.